Hello, it's me, Sparkle Lot again. I'm here to talk to you about your imagination and how you should use it in important and creative ways. Did that sound ridiculous? Good, I'm glad because it was supposed to. Anyways, it actually is important to exercise your imagination because if you don't, then you start to become like more robotic, more stiff. Uh, you, your joints don't bend as far, your toes are full of sand, and you have to go to your doctor's office every six days to tell him that something is wrong with you, even though it's really just the fact that you're depressed because you're spending all of your time either working or watching television, or maybe you're just the boy because you wanted to move out to California last year, but you, uh, your uh, wife said she didn't want to because it was too hot out there, even though that's where she's from. Now you live in the Midwest, like Ohio, which is necessarily the Midwest, maybe that's more of a uh, New England state, I'm not exactly sure, so if you're from Ohio and you want to correct me on that, go right ahead, because I don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about Ohio. All I know about Ohio is Drew Carey and the Cincinnati Bengals, that's all I know. Now, Bengals are actually very interesting to me because I like tigers. I've been to a zoo before where they had a tiger that had three legs, and I'm, ever since that encounter, I'm like, wow, that tiger had three legs. I've never seen a three-legged animal before. Uh, I thought that symmetry was important in the animal kingdom, but I guess this tiger was just born without a leg. And then it, I read the little panel in front of the, the tiger exhibit, and it just said that that particular tiger had had its uh, leg removed from poaches. So, I guess I was wrong. Sorry, tiger. Didn't mean to... Didn't mean to make fun of you or whatever. I hope you aren't tiger upset, because tiger upset is worse than being regular upset. Tiger upset is when you start to climb up fences and shoot people with your tiger teeth. Because that's what tigers like to do. If you've ever seen a tiger before, they like to be very rude to people who look at their exhibits. They'll growl at you. They'll be like, girl, I'm a tiger. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm going to jump out of this exhibit, and I will come and bite your face. And if you don't think I'm going to do that, if you think maybe I'm joking because I'm a tiger, let me tell you this. Tigers don't joke. And I know this for a fact. Tigers don't joke because they don't think anything is funny. Have you ever, have you ever seen um, uh, Frosted Flakes? Tony the Tiger, he doesn't joke around. He's serious all the time because he's an athlete. Like, most tigers are athletes. Actually, you know, it's kind of weird that Frosted Flakes' mascot is a tiger, considering tigers are rude animals and not, like, nice animals. Like, you got the Sugar Smack Cereal Frog or the Honey Crisp Bear, whatever it was. Or uh, even some have, like, leprechauns or just sea captains who, like, to bust into your house yelling words that they made up, like, crunch -a -ties. And it's like, what are you doing in my house? I can't believe you're in here. My parents are going to be so mad that you crashed through my front uh, door, the living room door. And, um... They're probably going to make me pay for the damages, even though I'm just a little boy. They're going to make me get, like, a full-time job or something and stop paying for the damages on this house that you caused. And I'm a little bit pissed off about it, but at least I get free Captain Crunch from all of this because I use the word crunchitize. And, uh... That was apparently your cue to bust your pirate ship in my house, I guess. That's just what we do these days. Now, some jokes, I, that joke might be overplayed. You might be thinking to yourself, but actually it's not because what you're thinking is, what you're actually thinking about is um, the Kool-Aid one where he busts through your wall and he's like, hello, my name is Mr. Kool-Aid, how are you doing today? And then you'll be like, hello, Mr. Kool-Aid, I'm glad you could be here. I have, I've been having a very bad day and I wanted to drink some Kool-Aid. Because it's refreshing, even though it's not really juice, it's more just the flavored sugar that you put into water. And then all the sugar bleeds out into the water, and then the water turns whatever color your sugar packet was. And it's like, well, this is delicious, even though there's no real nutritional value to it except for probably vitamin C, which I'm sure they added synthetically later on in the process of creating the product in the first place. Well, maybe I'm wrong. It's hard to say. You never know. Don't go to show. You never know. You never know. Um, so some fun now, huh? So labor trafficking, how about that? People like to kidnap little children and force them into slave labor camps or whatever it is that they like to do. And I think that that's wrong because children are not very good workers. They like to slack off on the job and they like to just kind of sit around and not do anything. They like to play video games. Uh, do you know how I feel about video games? I think they're terrible. I think they're garbage. And if your child is playing video games, you should probably put them into remedial classes because they will be dumb for the rest of their lives. Now, if you think that maybe that sounds a bit rude, uh, I don't care. I don't care that much if you think that I'm rude because, honestly, I've got some very strong opinions. And, uh, 
and uh, your opinions just don't, they roll off my shoulder. Like a rolling pin, if you were to put one on your shoulder, it would roll right out, because typically shoulders are rounded, in, a, in some degree, at the very least. And uh, when your shoulders are rounded like that, then it's like, it's just gonna fall right off. So it's like, how do birds even stay on your shoulders? I don't know, because birds, they got these, they, they got these talons, these amazing claws that they can use to grab on anything that they want to. I went to a pet shop one time, and they had a scarlet macaw. His name was Terrence, and he was very rude. He he uh, he squawked at me. He went squawk, and I'm like, uh, Terrence, excuse me. I don't understand what your problem is. I would love to. Um, investigate this further, Terrence, but you're just kind of being loud and unruly. And I don't like to use the word unruly that much because I think it's a very rude word, unruly. And if you don't believe me, then go look it up in uh, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. Uh, it, one, of the, one of the synonyms of the word unruly is... Uh, I, I forgot what I was talking about, to be honest. Um, Anyways, going up, uh, so, anyways, if you're, if you're being intimate with your lady, you want to ask for privacy from your housemate, that's what you gotta do. That's all I gotta say about that. Um, so yeah, now we're just gonna kinda shoot the breeze here, what am I doing exactly? Um, okay, this guy, this fella. Um, alright fella, you gotta, you gotta, like, settle down for just a second. So, anyways, yeah, I was I was going on about something a little bit ago where I was talking about uh, your imagination. It's important to exercise your imagination every day because you become stiff and uh, very, very, very much robotic. And I don't like to I don't like to be repetitive here, but y your imagination is very important. Creating is one of the most important things that you can do. I think um, I used to draw all the time in, in back in school. And when I was supposed to be taking notes, I'd be drawing, and the teachers would be like, you have to stop drawing so you can pay attention in class. I'd be like, well, what if I don't want to have a career as a uh, social studies teacher, or a museum curator, or uh, a chemist, or something like that, where it would be important for me to listen to what you're saying right now, but instead I want to be an artist or something like that. And then they'd be like, well, that's fine, I guess, if you want to do that, but in my class you're going to have to pay attention to what I'm saying, because I'm the most important person in the world. And... Uh, for some reason you think that uh, being a history teacher is not that impressive, it's like, well, you have to understand that uh, I went to school, college for like five years, so I'm obviously smarter than you. It's impossible to be smarter than somebody who has formal education, and that's, that's just what a lot of people think, and I don't know if that's, I necessarily agree with that. Some people might, I certainly don't, because I think that uh, intelligence comes from within. I think intelligence is something that anybody can have in any sort of capacity. And they don't necessarily have to uh, study to a attain such intelligence. I think that intelligence is just something that a lot of people have naturally. Like I said, I was in, in my high school days, I was in my high school's talented and gifted group. Uh, not to like, not to sound pretentious or nothing like that. But I was in my high school's talented and gifted group and I consistently did worse than this one kid in my, uh, in my, uh, Actually, he was in all, all of my classes in 7th grade. He was in all of my classes. And uh, I consistently did worse than him on all of my tests. And he was always, like, passing his tests and stuff. And I was just kind of fucking around like I was talking about a little bit ago. Because I didn't take it seriously. I didn't care that much. And I'm still not that upset about it. I think it's fine that I didn't pay attention. Because, like I was saying, I, this isn't what I care about doing. I don't like science that much. Unless it's something that I'm actually interested in. Like, I'm not interested in in cell division, but I am more so interested in something different like um, astrophysics or whatever else you might have like that. And it's like, well, that all goes hand in hand, and I'm like, well, that's not true. That's just not true at all. It doesn't go hand in hand. You have to understand that, uh, you have to understand that maybe, all right, buddy, fella. I'm, I'm going to take it easy here for a second so I can, uh, finish what it is I'm doing right now, because uh, this is very stressful, I'm very stressed as you can tell, I'm very, I'm a very stressed man, my nerves are going crazy, I'm shaking, uh, my body is farting a lot and I'm not controlling that, and it's like, well, that wouldn't be happening so much if this horrible tense situation wasn't occurring before my very eyes. Now, you might think that the, 
that what I'm saying is insane because, you know, like, you like to call me insane, you think I'm a dumb person or whatever it is, and you like to feel better than me, that's why you watch my show, is because you think you're a better person than I am, and I'm not going to disagree with you. I think you might be right on that because, you know, I'm not a very nice person. I like to, um, go outside and I like to spray paint dogs green on St. Patrick's Day because I think it's very festive, and if the dog doesn't like it, then I guess I just have to deal with that, and the other has to deal with that too. They're like, why did you paint my dog green? I'm like, I had a very good reason for doing it, and I'll tell you what it is. I'll explain it in my own words, and you'll be like, well, I don't want you painting my dog green at all. It doesn't matter if you have a good reason for it or not, because that's my dog, and you're not allowed to just paint other people's dogs. I'm like, that's where I disagree with you, because how can you own another living animal? That's what I have to say to them, and they're like, of course I can own another living animal. I have a contract right here saying that I bought this dog fair and square. I, I paid the rehoming fee. I paid for his shots and stuff and to get him fixed. And uh, I pay for his food all the time, he eats a lot of food, you know, he's a big dog, he's a German Shepherd, and he eats all the time, he's eating out of his big old dog bowl, and uh, he's a very messy eater too, so I have to clean it up, that's how I know he's been eating so much. And you're like, well, I just wanted to see a green German Shepherd, and I'd never seen one before, and I thought that uh, St. Patrick's Day was the best excuse I could possibly come up with for painting somebody else's dog, you're like, no, I don't think that's okay. And um, then he calls the cops, and the cops come over and say, did you let this man paint your dog? I'm like... And he's like, no, he, I didn't let him paint my dog. He just decided he was going to do it anyway. And I'm like, that uh, that's true, but it is St. Patrick's Day to my credit. It is St. Patrick's Day. And the police officer's like, all right, you know what? Go ahead and paint this dog. I don't care. Um, just do what you do. Uh, just don't paint this dog any other day of the year. It's not okay to paint anyone's dog any other day of the year besides St. Patrick's Day. So I got that in verbal. I got that verbal contract from a police officer, an, an officer of the law, who told me that it was okay for me to do these horrible things to animals. And I like to also step on snakes. I think snakes are gross. They like to wriggle. They go and it's disgusting. It disgusts me. It makes me want to vomit out of my nose. So, anyways. Um, I think we're just about wrapping up here. We're uh, about out of time, and uh, what better time to end the episode than during the credit sequence of the game that I just finished. So anyways, thank you for watching. Um, I've been Sparkle Dot. Uh, you should have water your plants, and cactuses don't need a lot of water, so don't water those cactuses too often, maybe like once a week or something if you really feel like you have to do it at all. Um, and uh, also, be sure to clip your toenails, because those bad boys get longer than you think, and if you're like me, you wear socks all the time, then you're like, you never see your toes unless you take a shower, and you don't even look down at your feet because you're so tired that you're just looking straight ahead, you got these dead, uh, black bags underneath your eyes just sagging down your face, and it's like, okay, well, what do we do now? I guess I got to clip my toenails, but I didn't look at it. Yuki chance, Papa. Alright, so anyways, I think I've gone on long enough, um, I appreciate your patronage, You've been a very, you've been a very nice boy, and uh, yeah, you know, just come back whenever you want to. I'll always be here, hugging you, except for when I'm not. Goodbye, mwah, sparkle up.